This is Twit. Xilinx Developer Forum, Xilinx CEO Victor Peng announced a new product family named Versal. It's uh, Ken Addison writing uh, for PC Per. Um, this is kind of the final name of Project Everest, uh, where they're doing the Adaptive Compute Acceleration Platform, or the ACAP market. Um, what is this? I mean, this is a, a platform. Is this a chipset? Is this a very complicated uh i mean what exactly are they doing with this it seems like a schmoo of processing it's it's a really interesting shift for them right so uh, xilinx is known for being an fpga company which is basically a a dynamically programmable processor and by hardware configurable i guess might be a better way of putting it um it allows you to kind of customize the the design of the processor uh, at production or through updates on the fly at the expense of die area and uh, sometimes power constraint too. But over time, what Xilinx has been doing is they've been in integrating different IP into these processors, right? So uh, they've worked with ARM for a while for people to be able to integrate ARM SOCs into their FPGAs so that they could do multifunction or, or have it be a command processor or whatever it has to be. And you could do that either with a drag and drop where you take a, an existing ARM core mm -hmm. and place it, or you could integrate the ARM core capability into the FPGA dynamically through the function of the FPGA. And that would allow you to place maybe blocks where you thought they would be more, more beneficial. You could adapt the memory hierarchy. You could do all kinds of customizations to it. Um, what this kind of product and, and segment represents for, for Xilinx is, a, is another step beyond that. If you look at what they call the ACAP, the Adaptive Compute Acceleration Platform, it's really just a name for what they believe is a, is a processor type that has general purpose units, customized units, and then the typical FPGA functionality that allows their customers to um, really build custom tailored computing solutions, right? So there are, um, so if you look, if you look at a block diagram of this, which is very neat in, in all of its uh, lit up glory. There is uh, a scalar processing engine, which is uh, a pair of Cortex A72 cores, a pair of Cortex R5 cores. R5 is the real-time part. So this is um, processors that are specifically designed to have latency as their minimum possible metric, right? So these would be things that, you know, you would want to be in uh, self-driving cars, for example. You want them to be minimal latency. Um, you have the adaptable hardware engine, which is the red section in the middle. That is where that is the classic FPGA portion of these products. They, you know, rearchitected fi uh, foundational hardware fabric is what they call it, right? And so, really, you could design this to be a memory structure. You could design it to be compute structure, um, all kinds of different things. And that's really where FPGA's value lies: is that if you have a custom algorithm, you can implement something uh, faster than a general purpose processor or faster than a GPU could do. Uh, or just more specific to, to something for power efficiency as well. And then the intelligent engines are what are actually new for them. They have, well, the, the DSP is updated, digital signal processor is updated, but they've also added the uh, AI engine in here as well, which is a, a uh, an array of vector processing units with direct attached memory, um, they didn't go to a whole lot of other architectural detail about what these are, but it is AI acceleration hardware. Think of uh, it being analogous to the tensor cores in NVIDIA GPUs or that Google is using in their in their TPUs, for example, something to that degree. But with a little bit of that customization uh, from Xilinx in terms of how the memory hierarchy uh, stuff works. And then there's protocol engines. It's got DDR4, HBM. Um, it's got uh, fabric interconnects between all of these different blocks. Essentially, what we're seeing is Xilinx branching out of just wanting to be known as, a, as an FPGA company. And instead, they're saying, look, we're building a, a total solution that people can use in edge compute, in AI use cases, in networking use cases, in prototyping use cases. Um, and their direct target is Intel and NVIDIA 
with with these products, right? If you look at the performance data that they that they supplied and that Ken showed some of in here, they're comparing it to, you know, their AI compute capabilities next to a Tesla V100 and next to a Xeon scalable uh, processor. So they they have yeah. they're 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 going after this this market now. They'll they'll tell you that. You know, they'll say, and it's true that, that they have all these existing customers. This is one segment of it. They believe this is where all their growth is going to to really shoot shoot out from. Uh, but you know that that there there are other areas they're in. But this is this is this is kind of their long term goal. This is a dramatic shift for them and uh, a pretty a pretty big bet for for a roadmap. Um, it, it was really interesting. I, I you know I was out at this event last week in in no wait this week in San Jose. And uh, I got to talk to a lot of executives and engineers about what the plans were for it, and it's um, it's pretty interesting. The, the the one caveat to it is that this is a second half of 2019 product, uh, mm -hmm. built on seven nanometer TSMC, so advanced process node technology. But it is second half of 2019, so the landscape might shift between now and then. And I'm sure Nvidia will have at least one product for the AI inference market updated between now and then. So I'm very curious to kind of see how all that changes um, and what customers will we see uh, adopting adopting the idea of the ACAP or uh, the Versal in this in this particular instance. So it's it's a really interesting kind of kind of shift, right? Of uh, mm -hmm. uh, of of major players.